our first guest brings life to Houston's Sea of Good Restaurants. He went from debearding mussels to getting a nomination for a James Beard Award. That's like the Oscars for a chef, especially because he understands firsthand how quickly circumstances can change. Chef Brian Caswell is helping us in the effort to stand against hunger. Please welcome the owner of Reef, Third Bar, and El Real Tex-Mex Cafe, Chef Caswell. Good morning. Good. So I mentioned how you understand firsthand how things can change quickly. Yes. You were one of those people who went under during Harvey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we went under Harvey and um, the, the whole restaurant just got doused. Uh, the dining room was ruined. Uh, the kitchen, although, was, was still functional, so we started cooking. Yeah, all right, you're back. Yeah. Full force now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when it comes to food, when you grew up, I uh, see, what, born in Lafayette, grew up on the Gulf Coast, so right. this is all a part of your DNA when you say reef. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's what I grew up, you know, trying to beg, bar, and steal the fish and, 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 and dig in every ditch, at, you know, all up and down the Gulf Coast. Yeah. That was, that was what I loved the most. Yeah, you loved to fish? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, I love so being on the water in general. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you also loved being in the kitchen, and that's Absolutely. one of the things you did as well. You helped your grandmother's cook. You were like a perfect boy. So, yeah, I, I, realized my, uh, I realized my mortality at a young age, and I knew that if I was going to be able to eat the food that my grandmother served to me, I needed to learn that as soon as I could. So, you know, when I was about 16, 17 years old, I started spending a lot of time with them cooking. One was kind of East Texas, Northern Louisiana. The other was straight, you know, down South, Gunas, like yeah. Cajun, like where we were from. So. <laughs> Put it all together, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's the cool thing about Houston and our food scene right now is that we're, we're putting things together. So it's not necessarily all the old recipes, but people are experimenting with food and then experiment with real food again. So yeah, we've gotten absolutely. back to What are you going to cook for us today? So what we're going to do is a vegetable paella. We're, we're kind of, you know, talking about the food bank. So, you know, the challenge is try to cook something nice with, with canned goods. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do a, a vegetable paella first step is the sofrito, uh -huh. which is a little bit of oil. Explain to folks if you don't understand what a paella is. Paella is a traditional Spanish dish, uh, rice dish with uh, using short grain rice. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do, but the only thing you can't put in it is lamb. So we're going to go with that. And then everybody's got Rotel tomatoes, right? These are pimentos. And then we're going to kind of just cook this down yeah and keep cooking it down keep cooking it down until it looks a little bit like this so at the right. food bank uh people can get fresh produce as well but Absolutely. if you got something in a can a lot of people might say well can you get stuff as good in a can and, and there are a lot of things that can well so yeah, there, are, there are and i mean it you know some people can't afford to have fresh produce as much as so you try to use the best yeah. best of what you have or even having just sitting on the shelf a while because like, i know i'll go right. i'll buy my vegetables and stuff and all of a sudden you look at it and go uh oh didn't get to it fast enough true right? true and things are in a glut right i mean like fruits and stuff that's when you make your jams and jellies and mm -hmm. stuff like that so then a lot of all oil in there then you the rice and you fry the rice so you gotta, you gotta fry the rice and get that going and then once that's good and fried you're gonna add the sofrito in there so when you have that fried rice it's gonna give it a little bit different texture it, yeah kind of, kind of gives it like a toasty kind of a nutty flavor mm -hmm. right so then you're gonna you're gonna mix that in there well then we're gonna add Our stock your stock all right and the peas and the carrots and this is a great dish that stretches well oh yeah well. this is two a two-day dish you, you can eat this for lunch in the morning. So you can mix that together, bring it to a boil, right? And then you're gonna cook it about five minutes on the uh, five to ten minutes on the stovetop, and another fifteen minutes in the oven. Okay. Right, and then we're gonna pull it out of the oven through like the magic of the magic All of right. TV. There you go. Oh, that's pretty. All right. So then you take the, the artichoke hearts that we got out of the can and, and asparagus as well. Kind of spread that around, and then a little lemon on on top, and then you're gonna garnish with a little bit of parsley as well. Yeah. Gonna have a little taste yeah. of that right there. And of course, there's all kinds of variations you can do with this. Absolutely. Right? Anything any kind of meat. Yeah, right. yeah, type of thing. Okay. Hello. Yeah, it was right. Mm, it was right. Mine's a little really, bit really spicier good. than the normal Spanish version. Yeah, well, that's okay. I'm a spicy roots. girl, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's funny how this is like, to grow up to be a chef now is like one of the number one things you have kids say. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, a few years ago, that's not what they said. Yeah. You know, thanks to a lot of the, I think, the food shows that the great thing about is they take us behind the scenes and we know we're only getting the edited 30 minute one hour glimpse of it but when you're like on iron chef for example there's a lot that goes into right, making this right. happen. Well, i try to people like you know because it is it real i mean it was real mm -hmm. i mean 
leading up to the hour cooking, not so real. Yeah. Take another shot, take another shot, you know, reset, reset, all that stuff. But when they turn this, when they hit the, you know, hit the mark and you went, you had an hour, it was as real as it could get. Yeah. You what cut your yourself, you cut yourself. Yeah, yeah. right. Just keep, keep it moving. Yeah. Put a bandage yeah. on it. Keep yeah. it moving because people got to eat. All right. So um, uh, what was the moment that you decided, okay, this is not only something I grew up with and a part of my family, but this needs to be my livelihood. I really want to do this for a living. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like the five years I went to college and had about a year and a half of credit, but I had five years of experience <laughs> in the kitchen. I said, you know right. what? This is what I want to do, yeah. you know. So I hauled off and went to culinary school, and after that, I spent nine years in Barcelona, and Hong Kong, Bangkok, New York, Bahamas, and then came back to Houston. Yeah. All right. There are a lot of kids who say they want to do this. There's one thing I think to say you want to be a chef, and then there's another level or another thing to say, and I also want to own the restaurant. Right. Right. For, for me, I wanted to own. I wanted to be a restaurant owner before I wanted to be a chef. Mm -hmm. The hospitality thing is what I love. My family, it was any excuse to throw a party, you know, and a house could fit comfortably 20. We'd invite 50. And, you know, I, that's what I did with my mom. I'd move furniture and, and I'd, I'd work the bar. I'd work the grill oh, and it. just entertaining people was something that I love so much. Mm -hmm. And I thought it's just a it's a beautiful human you know, instinct to entertain and to, and to have hospitality toward your fellow man. Yeah. And so that's the part I really got interested in first, and the cooking just kind of came behind. All right, best advice for, because I can't tell you, like my son, he loves to cook, but he's thinking he's going to go into a restaurant and just one night do this and next night do that, which, yeah, yeah depending on who you're working for, right? Yeah. Um, but just your best advice for those kids who say, you know what, I think I want to go to culinary school, and this is what I want to yeah, do. Yeah, I would work in a kitchen. Get a good pair of shoes, first thing, yeah, right. and, uh, <laughs> and then and see what it's like to work 12 hours a day on your feet in a yeah. sweat. And to and manage down the, the cost and manage the kitchen. Well, it's not just about a, cooking, right? That's, that's way a down the line, thing. too. Yeah. That's, a, yeah. that's, a, that's, an even, yeah. that's an even bigger step. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, thank you so much. We're glad that you're back and you. up and Adam. So there's Reith. Then tell us the atmosphere of the other restaurants. So uh, El Real. Um, we have two in the airport, El Real and Third Bar, but El Real is uh, classic Tex-Mex in the old Tower Theater, mm -hmm. um, Montrose and, and Westheimer, right in the heart of Montrose. And then Reef and Third Bar is basically just a market-driven Gulf seafood restaurant. It kind of serves Houston's food, you know, like the different yeah. cultures that I worked in and the, you know, the cultures that we have here. All right, I want to I come be a hostess in one of your restaurants. Any, anything. Can well, I we eat need free? good help. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. I'm always hired. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And by the way, on that nomination, James Baird, that's as good as it gets, oh, yeah, right? Thanks. Besides bringing it home. But thank you very much. You can find more information on Reef and El Real Tex-Mex Cafe, as well as the recipe for today's vegetable paella on GreatDayHouston.com. KHOU is asking you to help us stand against hunger. Our goal is to collect enough food and cash donations to provide 125,000 meals for Houston area children. Trust me, they'll eat all those meals and a whole lot more. Text KHOU Food to 41444 to donate. You can also help fill a 26-foot truck from the Houston Food Bank. This Friday, you can drop off non-perishable food items like the ones that we just showed you at the KHOU studios located at 5718 West Timer. You can do that from 6 in the morning until 7 p.m. And thank you in advance for your donation.